Hey, what's going on out there? I'm Sean Devine. Hope you all are doing well. In this video, we'll be breaking down my M1 MacBook Pro base studio setup. I've been getting a lot of questions about this laptop. Those of you who follow the channel, you know I switched from an iMac to an Intel-based MacBook Pro in about 2020. I really appreciated the flexibility as well as the workflow that that laptop-based studio allowed me. However, Previously, the MacBook Pro, the Intel-based version specifically, had quite a few limitations in terms of using it in this kind of environment. The performance, connectivity, thermals and fan issues got to be something that we really had to consider. And so I wanna talk about you know, what has changed here with Apple Silicon. Also wanna talk about compatibility in terms of your plugins and DAWs, and also just what the landscape of Apple Silicon in the MacBook Pro looks like moving forward. I've had this laptop since launch date, so about six months now, this is not sponsored by Apple. I purchased the laptop. These are just my honest experiences in hopes that it will help you all who are considering uh, these laptops. Real quickly, I wanna tell you about this video sponsor, The Ridge Wallet. The Ridge creates everyday essentials to simplify your life and travel, and The Ridge Wallet is no exception. I've been traveling cross country throughout 2022 with The Ridge Wallet, and I can confidently say that I will never go back to a standard wallet again. It's a great way to free up some space in your pocket, have easy access to what you need, and get rid of everything that you don't. So if you're interested in The Ridge Wallet, I will include an exclusive link along with a 10% off discount in the description. Just to clarify, the main reason why I purchased a max spec M1 MacBook Pro is mainly for video editing and for 4K content. So a lot of you are not going to need that amount of power. And we'll talk more about that when I get to uh, some recommendations, but I just wanted to let you know the specific specs of the machine here in front of me. Let's talk about some real world performance jumps and just what I noticed initially in terms of that Apple Silicon uh, change there. So I had a session on the Intel based MacBook Pro that I was working on. It's uh, quite involving, well over 100 tracks, plenty of plugins and lots of processing. And that Intel MacBook Pro could not get through the timeline or I could not bounce those tracks without freezing about half of the audio tracks in the session and I really was getting frustrated and struggling with trying to uh, to wrap that one up. Same session opening on the M1 MacBook Pro Apple Silicon was tapping the CPUs at about 25%, no hiccups, everything playing back perfectly. So I was very impressed just with that initial test. Now, the other thing that I noticed working in sessions and also just in the day to day is that I never heard the fans turn on. Big issue with the previous MacBook Pro models was the thermals and that fan would go relentlessly. I just know that uh, I had a lot of issues with noise and it seemed like the fans would kick on even just starting up the laptop. It's almost like the laptop didn't know when was appropriate to turn on the fans, so it would just do it at the most inconvenient times just to interrupt you and frustrate you a little bit. I had some third-party solutions that I shared. I can happily say with this, I haven't had to go out and search for those things. It just runs the way it's supposed to. It runs cool, it runs efficient. I didn't hear the fans kick in at all for about the first two or three weeks that I had the laptop. Now I did start running some benchmarks and then I also did uh, some Final Cut exports of 4K content and I was able to get the fans up and spinning. Now I've heard people talking about the 14 inch model specifically with this M1 Max processor saying that it's loud and that the fans kick on very easily. I'm not doing heavy gaming or you know 3D rendering, but that has not been my experience. I've had absolutely no issues with the fans and that's coming from someone here in the audio space that's very sensitive to noise. Now one thing for those of you specifically in the audio environment, if you're still really concerned about the fan noise and you want to keep those at a minimum you can activate what's called low power mode here in osx monterey what this will do is just reduce the amount of energy it will you know dim the display a little bit do subtle things to make sure that those fans aren't going to kick on unless it's absolutely necessary now again even with low power mode unchecked 
I barely ever hear these fans turn on. Another very important aspect of utilizing a MacBook Pro in the studio is the connectivity and how you're going to interface the laptop with all of the equipment that you see in the studio, your external monitor, all of your hard drives, you know, the different audio pieces that you see here. I wanted that to be a very simple solution. And so what I was able to do in my previous setup was implement one single Thunderbolt cable that would connect to the laptop. And then everything that you see here is all connected through that. Thankfully with Thunderbolt, that is possible. Now, previously I had a CalDigit TS3 Plus hub, which was great. I did a video about that. And I recently updated to the TS4, which gives me again, the Thunderbolt 4 connection, which we now have on the M1 MacBook Pro and also additional ports, faster ports for my SSD hard drives. This has just been an essential indispensable uh, piece of the studio and allowing me to you know, hook all these things up in a way that's just no hassle. And I can just close the laptop eject my hard drives, you know, take that out on the go. And then when I come back in the studio, hook it up with that single cable, I can close the screen if I want to use it in clamshell mode and put it up on the external display. As far as the connectivity on the laptop itself, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but I will just say that there have been improvements there and there's plenty of useful ports to have what you need on the go. There's also the return of MagSafe, which I had on a, an older MacBook Pro and liked. I will also say that the addition of a high impedance headphone jack has been really useful for taking this out on the go i flew across the country with this a few weeks ago took my uh you know professional studio headphones with me previously when you hook them up to your laptop you know they just don't have the power that's going to give you the performance you need out of a uh, high quality headphone like this this headphone jack is very comparable to you know what i hear with my interface or with a dedicated uh, headphone amplifier so a really nice pro audio edition. So I've said a lot of great things about the laptop thus far. It has been a great experience, but now let's talk about some of the things that haven't been quite as smooth as maybe I thought they were going to be, which is, you know, the move from Intel based programs, you know, your plugins, DAWs to what is Apple Silicon, right? So that's the optimized uh, language and the processor in here, all that works together uh, for that native ARM uh, architecture. Now they did build something called Rosetta, which is basically just a translation language that's optimized that takes anything that's built for the Intel based processor and allows it to run on Apple Silicon. So that's been helpful. However, when I first, you know, got this machine and just opened up logic, for example, in native ARM Apple Silicon mode, a lot of the plugins had not yet been compiled to run on Apple Silicon, which means they just won't open or they won't run correctly. If a lot of the plugins and the tools you're using in your DAW aren't working properly, you need to switch your DAW into Rosetta mode. So you just need to make sure that that open using Rosetta is checked. Now to this day, six months later, uh, I am still running Logic Pro in Rosetta. So I think for those of us who bought these six months ago, you know, we were kind of way ahead of the curve in terms of where that transition was. And there was still just a lot of incompatibility versus now I think the landscape has uh, improved dramatically. Still some things, you know, to work through. I still have a few plugins that are, are not updated yet. The good news is the performance jumps and just the smoothness of everything running here on this system has been in Rosetta mode, which means it's just an optimized, you know, version of the Intel language. Uh, so once everything is completely running on Apple Silicon and I open up Logic with all the plugins running in that native language, it just means it's gonna be that much faster, which gives you even more of future perspective of the power that's here that's not even necessarily being fully tapped, at least in my case, and for most of you out there who are gonna be running in Rosetta mode, at least for a little while longer, it's gonna be really exciting when all of the programs, all the plugins, all of the different software is running, you know, optimized for uh, the native ARM architecture. I'm sure a lot of you are gonna ask why I went with the 14 inch versus the 16 inch, and this is really a personal decision uh, you're going to have some trade-offs and mainly that's going to be in slight 
performance differences between the 14 inch and the 16 inch, mainly because the 16 inch is bigger. It is gonna have slightly improved thermals. It also has slightly bigger fans in the 16 inch. So I was a little bit concerned about that, but like I said, the 14 inch, even with the M1 Max in practice here in a real world setting, Fan issue thermals have not been a problem for me. Battery life, I used this in traveling, didn't have my charger with me, and this thing lasted what seemed like forever without a dead battery. My old MacBook, you might be lucky to get three or four hours. Even in intensive tasks with this, I'm getting more like 10 hours. And if you're doing light tasks like email and video, you can get upwards of 18 to 20 hours. So you're not gonna need your charger the whole day. Previously owning a 13 inch MacBook Pro is a 2010 model. I just love the form factor of it. I thought the size of it was great. It was a little bit underwhelming in terms of power, but that's what made me so excited about the 14 inch is now we have that same, you know, more compact form factor that makes it easy to travel and be on the go with, but I don't feel like I'm sacrificing power at all. This thing is a beast. I call it the little beast for a reason. It's the perfect form factor and the screen is really impressive even for a smaller 14 inch. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you know, this particular MacBook Pro that I have here, it's gonna be overkill for probably, you know, 80% of you out there who are doing just music and audio and, and not really getting into the video side of things. So I wanna talk about some things to consider if you're in the market for a, a new MacBook Pro. Right now we got the 13 inch, the 14 inch and the 16, you know, this 13 inch model with the touch bar, I think this is gonna get phased out or will be updated very soon. I wouldn't personally be looking at that one. So it really comes down to, you know, 14 and 16. Like I said, that's a preference. Do you wanna go for more of a, a smaller form factor? or if you want slightly better specs in terms of performance and thermals, is it really gonna make that much of a difference? That's for you to decide. Also, if you primarily have the MacBook docked here in the studio versus if you're taking it out and uh, you know using it remotely in other studios or you're meeting up with friends to do music, that's something to consider. This 16 inch is considerably larger. What you can equip the laptops with is the same. So let's just go ahead and say we select the 14 inch and choose this one. Now, as far as specific specs here, I would recommend sticking with the baseline M1 Pro processor, still a 10 core CPU. You know, when we start talking about the M1 Max, those uh, advantages really start to come down to the GPU cores, more for a video based user. So I would stick with that. Now, as far as memory these days, no matter what MacBook you're going for, I would try to stick with at least 32 gigs of RAM, just as far as, you know, using uh, intensive plugins and things and moving forward, that's gonna be a safe bet. Storage, I went with a two terabyte SSD. I like just knowing that I've got a little bit of extra space. If you look at uh, this right now, I'm only using about, yeah, a half a terabyte. Now that you have the SD card back in the MacBook Pro, if you just need to store sessions and audio files and things like that, save yourself some money from having to get such a big internal SSD. So I'd think one terabyte would be just fine. So with those specs, I mean, we're still looking at a lot of money. I would just say, consider checking out the MacBook Air. Now, right now, this is just the original M1, but I have a feeling that this machine is gonna be updated very soon, and it may be one of the first machines to see the M2 chip, which I think they're gonna get a lot of power and efficiency out of. And once again, this compact form factor in the MacBook Air may be redesigned. And so I think that this, for those of you in audio and music specifically, could be a really nice machine and also uh, save you some money because right now uh, these are starting at, you know, right around a thousand bucks. So I would definitely just keep an eye on that. I know this is a video about MacBook Pros, uh, but I think that MacBook Air could end up being a really great option for audio professionals out there in the near future with Apple Silicon. All right, y'all, so I hope this was helpful getting some of my real world experience and impressions of the new M1 MacBook Pro over the past six months. And I hope it's answered some questions for those of you who may be you know, previous Intel MacBook 
Pro owners and you're thinking about maybe jumping into Apple Silicon, what has that looked like? What will it look like moving forward? I think if you were an early adopter like me, maybe that was a little bit rockier than you thought, but it's getting to be more of a smoother ride as we move forward, as more developers embrace the Apple Silicon environment. I think this machine, the power of this hasn't even been fully tapped. So I'm just excited to see where that's headed and also where the uh, Apple Silicon chips are headed. They're gonna get nothing but better. So there's never been a better time to get into being a MacBook Pro user, especially as someone in the music and audio space. So if you learn anything in the video, please like, subscribe, and consider sharing. Hit that notification bell for more. We'll talk to you soon.